Have you ever wondered what does the 17,000 lines of code from one script on Yandere Simulator do? Because I have, and apparently there haven't been a lot of people that have really looked into it. Or at least not that I'm aware of. So I decided, ah, why not? I'm gonna take a look into it. What are my qualifications? Well, fucking nothing. I know a little bit of programming. I mean, I'm a, I'm a computer science student, and I fooled around with Unity a little bit, a little bit so I, I guess I'm more qualified than Yandere Dev, right? So I guess I can, I can talk some shit about this. Uh, I'm mainly just doing this because I've seen some people on Twitter just not really knowing what it does, and they go like, oh, you you execute 17,000 lines of code every frame? That's kind of stupid. And while it is still stupid, it's not 17,000 lines of code that are being executed every frame. So it's not that bad, right? Well, it's pretty bad, but we, we can take a look at it. So that's what I, I, I feel like doing. I'm going to take some time off my day, maybe a couple days at a time, and just to see what exactly this is all about, right? So, let's go. First of all, what I really need to say is that a lot of lines are just these commentaries from the decompiler that and empty spaces. I think the empty spaces are from Yonder Dev himself. So, a lot of a lot of those are just empty spaces and uh I mean line breaks and uh empty token commentaries and shit so a lot of those are just gonna be like that especially here in uh in a field part of the class so it's not as big as it is but it's still it's pretty fucking big that said um this is not really the source code itself but it's still pretty readable so we can try to figure out what most stuff does uh, through here and when i when I don't know what something does, I'm going to try to look it out because the repository in, Git, uh, in GitHub has, I think, everything. So we can go and take a look there. Should I do it? I don't know. Probably not. But I, but I feel like doing it anyway. Why not? I just don't have anything else to do. I'm really tired. And uh, I feel like this is going to be a good learning process for me as well because I can see what not to do and I get to learn a little bit of... You know, some stuff that I probably don't know. Yeah, you know, could be good. And you might also learn something as well. So let's start with uh, this function that is called alive. It's a Boolean function. And all it does is return a value that is def type is going to be equal to def type none. So, I, I mean, it's, gonna, it's not it's going to be equal. It checks if it's equal. If, Def, the def type from this object is none, and if it is, it returns a false. I mean, if it is, it returns true. If it is not, it's false, and it checks if the object, the student, is alive or not for that. Pretty normal function being added over here at the top. I'm not entirely sure why. Probably just being added at the last moment. I don't know about that. Anyway, let's go to the start function. Um, so just for the people that don't know, Unity, it has some special functions, and the start function is one of them, and it's executed once in the lifetime of a script uh, when it's instantiated. When an object is created on a scene, and a scene being just, you know, where everything is in the game at the moment that is loaded up, it's executed. So it runs once, and it's done, and it's never ran again. Not even if you uh, unable and re-enable the object, it's not going to run. So there is that. There are other, some other functions that are uh, special for Unity as well, like awake and update, but I'm not going to go over them right now. Just know that start is one of the first ones to be executed when an object is created in Unity. That is, if it has a start function to begin with. It doesn't really need to. So let's go to here that is the first line counter and m is going to be a string that is f02 underline teacher counter b underline 00 
I'm not entirely sure what this is supposed to be. I, I, I could go look what is counter on M. Should I do that? All right, I have no idea what counter on M is supposed to be, and I don't really care. So the next line is going to be if started is false. I don't really know why he does this because okay so one of the things that you can do in unity is that you can set values for fields through the inspector and that's my phone going off what you can do is that you can set values through the inspector that uh don't need to be set up through the code just to make things a little bit easier to manipulate and stuff like that so you don't need to recompile every time it's just uh, very convenient um so you can this is this is a public public one if i'm not mistaken i looked it up it's a public variable so uh, yeah it's a public field so he can say that it's not started in the beginning but i'm not entirely sure what would it be the purpose of this unless it's a prefab and everything is already set up but then what is the purpose of the start function in the first place i don't really know and i'm yeah, it doesn't really make much sense. This, this is kind of redundant. It's kind of unnecessary. I don't know why it's here. But either way. So let's get into the first if function. That is, that is a pretty big one. You can, yeah, it's pretty big. So here we go for character animation. It's going to be a character .get component animation. Okay, so we get the animation component and saves the memory. Pretty normal, nothing unusual there. My bento is gonna be bento dog get component generic bento script. Uh, I have the bento script. This is not generic. There's a generic one. There is a generic. One. Oh my god! Please. All right. So <laughs> let me get this. All right. So apparently there's there is a generic bento script and a bento script, and I don't really know what's the difference between them. Other than, okay, so the bento script is a start function, and uh, I, I did a little skimming over here, and apparently it's, it has something to do with if the, the bento is poison or not, or whatever. So let's take a look at this one. Isn't there poison type equals one? Wait, what? Okay, wait, hold on. I've, I've seen this somewhere. If. Wait, yeah. If prompt circle zero. Hey, hold on. Is this going on? Okay, okay. So if prompt circle zero fill amount equals zero, yandere inventory emetic. Uh, if this yandere inventory emetic poison, yandere inventory emetic poison equals false, poison type equals one, else. This yandere inventory red poison equals false. This yandere poison type equals three. If this prompt circle fill amount equals zero, yandere matrix poison. It's the same code. It's the same code. Why are you repeating code? Why is the <laughs> Why are you not using uh? What's it called again? Why are you not using? Ah, fuck. I have forgotten the name. It's inheritance. God, my English goes bad when I need it. Well, but why isn't he using inheritance? These scripts seem to do essentially the same. The only difference there here is that, like, here it does uh, something else right after rather than the emetic equals true, then shut off and return. Like, why are they different but do some of the same stuff? You could... You could just inherit like the the bento script to you know to the generic bento script this being the father i guess that would make sense right i don't know why not just do that it seems very obvious oh there's okay so wait shut off it doesn't have shut off here but but this seems to be very similar wait no Maybe just me. There's something else here that looks similar. Well, whatever. It just feels weird. 
there's some stuff that doesn't really need to be repeated. It doesn't really do anything different other than what happens right after. But then why not just doing the same class? Like everything in one class. If you're going to do the same stuff, you like if else's anyway. But yeah, just inherit those. It makes sense. Anyway, so let's keep let's continue. Pathfinding pathfinding dot repat for eight plus equals to student ID time zero point zero one. I don't really know why it has this plus equals here because I don't know why this like why this would be a different value for each student. It doesn't seem like it should be, but probably let okay, let's say that it that it is a different value for each student. Whatever. Then this makes sense, I guess. But why specifically it's a val like why specifically specifically multiplying student ID by 0 0.01 is beyond me. Uh, original idle NM is gonna be idle NM. Original lean NM is gonna be lean NM. All right, so let's go to here. Oh, what's this? So if not student manager that loves sick. So if not loves sick and School atmosphere dot type equals to school atmosphere type dot low and club minus equal to club type dot gamey. So <laughs> basically, if you're not love sick, I mean you're not you the student. Basically, if the student is not love sick and the atmosphere type is low and the club you're, he, it's in is less to the gaming one. And I have the enum for the club over here. So basically we have all of these types of uh, clubs. And we have none, cooking, drama, occult, art, light music, martial arts, photography, science, sports, gardening, gaming, council, bully, delinquent, nemesis equals 99. Why not just put that at the end, but whatever. Teacher, gym teacher, nurse, counselor, and headmaster. So essentially, uh, I didn't know much about enums. So I looked it up. By the way, this is the second time that I'm trying to record this. Thankfully, I didn't really record much the first time. But let me just open up the thing real quick. So over here, uh, it says that enum enriched type or enum type is a value type defined by a set of named constants of the underlying integral numeric type. To define an enumeration type, use the enum keyword and specify the names of enum num members. So basically, enum season is going to be spring, summer, autumn, and winter. By default, the associated constant values of enum members are of type int. They start with zero and increase by not one following the definition text order. You can explicitly specify any other enterronumeric type as an underlying type of an enumeration type. You can also explicitly specify the associated constant values as the following examples shows. None equals zero, unknown equals one, connection loss equals 100, outlier rating equals 200. All right, cool. So basically, they're numbers. You can translate words to numbers, and it makes things easier to remember. That's great. That's wonderful. So let's figure it out. Uh, the club is less or equal to the gaming club. The gaming club being this one right, right here. So anything that is here, including none, is good enough for this uh, condition here. And if it if it all comes together, then idle and M becomes paranoid and M. Okay, it becomes paranoid. If club globals club equals to club type occult, I don't really know what club globals is. So let's take a look over here. Club globals. Oh boy. Uh, club type club get return globals helper. Got it. Get an num club type. Blah 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 blah. Sad blah 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 blah. Okay, so the club globals it has this static function that is club type club. So it's a club function and it does a get return globals helper get enum club type profile plus game globals dot profile plus club set globals helper dot set enum club type profile plus game globals dot profile plus club value so this apparently sets and gets the type of club but 
I don't know, like, why this wouldn't be something already set in a cult. Whatever, you know. Club goal is a club because club type of cult. Maybe, maybe it sets in real time. Somewhere, some, some, somewhere, somewhere in some other, some other point in the space, it probably sets the the club to be whatever it is, and I don't, not entirely sure what it does. But if it's a cult here, then perception equals point zero, it's point five. Cool. Then hearts dot emission dot enable equals false. Prompt owner type equals prompt owner type dot person. Ah, uh, fine. Paranoia equals two minus cool globals dot school atmosphere. Okay. <laughs> Vision distance equals player globals dot panties equipped. Oh, here we go. The panty shit equals four. Uh, wow, he's using the shortened expressions. I I, I forgot what's the proper name for these. I always kind of kept confused, but uh, if I'm not if I'm not entirely sure, this means that. Uh, if if pennies equipped equals four, then five f. If not, else ten times this dot paranoia. Okay. If game object dot find detection camera is different from no, then spawn detection marker. This is gonna find everything that. Okay, oh, actually, this is gonna find the first thing that is called detection camera in a whole scene, and is gonna spawn detection marker. So apparently. Hopefully there's only one. Uh, Studio JSON is gonna be JSON. This is gonna be this is gonna be loading things from a JSON. So yeah, this is. Should, let me take a look. JSON students. This student ID. Okay. Schedule blocks. It's gonna be student JSON. Okay. So it's gonna load everything from the JSON. Cool. Original club is gonna be club. So it's it's. It's it's original club, whatever that does is gonna be its club. Wait, it's, it's, oh it's it's on here. Okay. Alright then. So it's gonna keep changing. God, alright. If student globals that get student broken student ID Wait, student globals get student broken student ID Cosmetic right eye renderer game objects had active false. Cosmetic left eye renderer game objects had active false. Cosmetic left eye is light set active false. Right MTI is set active true. Left MTI is set active true. Shy is true. Persona equals persona type dot coward. Uh, so this there's gonna be something on this student globals class that is gonna be like oh this dude this particular student depending on his id is gonna have these traits i i'm pretty sure that you could just you know set those on a prefab and it would just be easier why not just set everything on a prefab why do everything like on real time because like i'm not entirely sure if you're like if these characters are gonna be procedural or whatever, but if they are, then I guess that kind of makes sense. But if not, then I mean this seems to be set on stone, so this could just be a prefab, right? If I'm wrong, please correct me. I'm not entirely sure myself, but it feels like the way to me. If name equals random so the if the object's name is random then oh by the way it's not it's not the name of the object is the the from this script itself if it's named random then the persona is going to be persona type unity engine random range from one to eight and if persona equals persona type dot love trucks, okay, so this is gonna be an enum. And people have said that he doesn't use enums, so he's clearly using him them here. He just doesn't really use them on other places where he could be using it. Persona is gonna be persona type phone addict. Why? Wait, what? What? <laughs> Wait, why? So you have a persona. All right. So first of all. You say persona is gonna be 
eight. A, he's going to get a random number from 108. Okay, so you get a random number. It comes in and it says, oh, this is your persona type. If if one of those happened to be love struck, then you become phone addict? Wait, wait, then why have this? I don't get it. <laughs> you're just you're just saying like, oh, so it just gets like it just gets a value, but oh, I don't like this value, so it's gonna be this one. Or okay then, F fuck it, who cares? Uh, then it gets the student JSON persona is gonna be okay, so it's gonna save on the JSON I think. Uh, if persona equals persona type heroic, then strength is gonna be a random range from one to five, and it saves that. Okay. It doesn't save it. It's not saving yet, but it's gonna you know put it on a student JSON uh, thing. And that hopefully is saved later. So, all right. So we have seat is going to be student manager, the seats, the class dot list, student Jason seat. So the students have assigned seats for them. Okay, that's that's cool. Game object dot name is going to be concat of student underlying the ID. To string, open parentheses. I can't English. I'm sorry. Open parentheses, name, close parentheses. All right. Well, you're just generating the names on the fly. That's okay. That's fine. I was, I, I'm still pretty sure that. Actually, never mind. This is okay. Uh, I think, though, I think there are other ways that you could, you know, I mean, yeah, this is fine. Original persona is this persona. All right, so after all that fucking mess with the persona here, we're just finally setting the original persona. Uh, if student ID equals 81 and student globals get student broken 80, what? You, I mean, you could, you could, you could have just said student ID over here, but whatever. I guess. I mean, sure. You could also just do this, but what if the IG, what if the ID changes? Persona is gonna be, well, why are you fucking changing the persona again? The persona is gonna be equal persona type coward. So right, so right after we already established the persona of the, the the student, we change it again to something else. If it's student ID is 81, why not do that right back there? If persona equals persona type dot loner, or persona equals persona type dot coward, or persona equals persona dot fragile. Camera and M's is gonna be coward and M's. Okay, so. Yeah, I guess there's nothing wrong here, but I, I, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, there is an easier way for you to compare things like this, because this can get complicated really fast. If, like, for example, if you want to compare more things and you're gonna be comparing all of this, I think that what you can do alternatively is just have a function that has the switch case and you just run run it here you just go you go call call the function with the persona type of the the object and r over there the function it compares everything and it does what it needs to do with the switch case right it would be a lot better i mean because in this case it's just like oh if you're a loner or a coward or fragile then you get the cover nms so it's just like uh if you have those three just do that you're good to go l else if persona um persona equals Persona type dot t-shirt fat. What the fuck? Or persona equals persona type heroic. Or persona equals persona type strict. Then hero NMs. Why would the teachers? Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, 
if it's the kind of teachers that I'm thinking about, like the the dude that uh, is just a yes man of the teacher, I I don't really know the proper term for that, but yeah. So it's the same case as before. The only difference is that you would have um, actually, yeah, it would just do more uh, cases for the switch case. We just be like, if uh, a switch and then case one, two, three, actually, yeah, in case, I, I'm pretty sure that you could just put it all um, into, let me think, if you just be like one, two, three, or in the beginning of the function, you set a value for uh, the persona type in, in this situation, then you just, uh, and then you run the switch case, and I guess that could make things a little bit easier, but just like, oh, it's so one, two, three, then this one, then uh, four, five, six, and this one. But I digress. I mean, same thing here, else if, uh, he, he, it got complicated. You can see that it got complicated, and he just started piecing this into different conditions so if this persona type evil spiteful violent then evil and m's okay and if social butterfly love struck phone addict sloth then social and m's if club globals get club close the club then club equals club type none and then oh my god a lot of uh a lot of uh what's it called again fuck i forgot the name i was uh attribution right yes Dialog wheel is gonna be dialog wheel component. Just gonna attribute the components over here. Cool. Subtitle is gonna be under dot subtitle. Camera effects. Uh, right eye origins. Right eye local position. Left eye origins gonna be left eye local position. Bento health bar. Okay, it sets all of this stuff on screen. Honestly, it's things like health bar, like things like these that are ui they could just be part of a prefab because i'm pretty sure you i mean hey, hey, hey this one's cool vomiting meter yeah, yeah, yeah like vomiting everywhere but things like health bar ui elements you could just instantiate them on a prefab and just selectively uh put them all on false or true much easier than just doing them all here but but okay chopsticks well sketchbook smartphone whatever uh speech lines don't stop why are you stopping something that hasn't begun uh so for each game object in this science props if game object is different from null then set active is false all right so here again why are these not being instantiated in the scene already as false? Why are you doing everything? Okay, so one thing that I'm not really understanding is science props for every student? Okay, cool, but if they're all gonna be false, why not just have them be false from the beginning? You could, like, there's so much you can do with prefabs. If you just these you, these are game objects. You can just instantiate. You can you can just instant like science props. Uh, it's a what game objects? It's a, an array of game objects. You can just instantiate the prefabs in the inspector, and the prefabs can come already false. You don't need to do this. This isn't really needed. Okay, so next one is the the same thing. Finger food. Oh, whole oh, oh, hell yeah, Doritos man. Uh, original. Or, oh, original, original walk and M is gonna be walk and M. Original sprint and M, sprint and M. Original walk and M. Oh, 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 not to be mistaken by the original, original is gonna be walk and M as well. Fine. Oh, here we go, messing with the persona. Is persona shit again. Persona is persona type evil, scary and M equals evil witness and M. Okay, fine. Persona is the phone addict, then smartphone transform location. Uh, transform local position is gonna be in this specific place 
smartphone transform local Euler angles is going to be this specific rotation. C countdown speed equals 0 0.1 F. Let's just vote. Spin an M, phone an M, phone an M. Okay. I, like like I've been saying, this uh, this all could be instantiated, not directly through code. It's not really necessary, but but still, it's not something inherently bad. But I think that that is just if you want to do small changes, if if any, this is all going to be complicated to to identify later on, especially because nothing is. Actually, never mind. I would I would say that nothing here has any sort of commentary, but I doubt that is really the case in a source code because again, this is through decompiling, and I really doubt that this the game is gonna ha consider like the game is even gonna consider the 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 commentary. So yeah, there's not gonna be any commentaries here. This is all we get. Uh, if club, I mean that is that is all. If Yonder Dev actually commentates his code, right? But I digress. Uh, if club equals club type bully, then if not, student globals get student broken. This student ID. If you're not a very specific ID, then I mean, rather, if if your ID returns false for whatever reason, then uh, the idle NM is gonna get phone NM an an zero, bully ID, student ID minus eighty. If test globals that get test status thirty six equals three and not school globals reacted to game leader then this student manager reacts as game leader equals true schedule block schedule block equals schedule blocks for schedule block destination equals shock schedule block action equals shock all right if not mail then you get skirt origins he I don't really understand why I do this all through code, but all right, I guess he instantiates skirt origins, instrument bag, pink random gossip, pick random gossip animation, dramatic camera, whole game objects had acts of false. Uh, all of these objects are false. For each game object, game object. Three Y three. Wait, did he use? Yeah, he used two here. Wait, I'm pretty sure that you don't need to say this is two or three because they're all in different scopes. Pretty sure. Anyway, the game object and instruments, the same thing again. The if they're just all gonna be false, then just set them to false. In the prefab, drumsticks set active false. Drumsticks set active false. This is drumstick one and two. If club is greater or equal to teacher, which if we go back here, uh, here, here, where is it? Here, here. Teacher is right here. All right. So this is all for the adults. I believe. Okay. So if the club is an adult club, I guess you could do this with a tag system. I'm pretty sure that I see the intention he's doing here, but using the tags inside the Unity uh, inspector could probably have the same effect. I guess. So become teacher. Cool. If student manager dot sensor and t not teacher, then cosmetic sensor pen. Wait, what? Oh, so he's selectively. <laughs> Wait, he's selectively censoring the panties of some students, but not the teachers. The teachers are okay. Okay. 
All right then. Fine. Wait. Oh. Wait. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. The, he, uh, this, a teacher is just a glorified student in this school. I get it. Disable effects. Okay. Else. Oh, this is the this is the else for the if. Oh, oh, for the male one. Okay, never mind. Else, if male, then random chair animation is gonna be chair animation, random between zero and the length of. Okay, so it gets a random animation that he has. Map marker, game objects are active false. Then speech line stop. Everything false. Particle system, liquid emitters. Okay, for uh, I less than liquid emitters are length I plus plus liquid emitters I game objects that active false. Oh, fine. I'm pretty sure you could just use the for each like you used the last times, but whatever. If the student ID equals one. Map marker game object set active true. Uh, apparently, the student ID one is really important. Probably senpai. Else, if the student ID equals two, then if student globals get student dead three, or student globals get student kidnapped three, or student manager students three slave schedule block two. Equals schedule blocks index two. Schedule block two dot destination equals morn. Schedule block two actual two action equals morn. Idle animation equals bullied idle animation and walk animation equals bullied walk animation. Else if student ID equals three, if student globals get student dead to all oh, oh my god, okay. If get student dead to or get student kidnapped to or students index two equals no or student manager students index two is not no and student manager students two is lave. Wait, okay, let me let me get this straight. Let me try and understand this. So this is gonna be true if stu this uh, this is gonna be true if this this student is dead or if the student is kidnapped or if it doesn't exist at all. Why would it not exist? I don't know. It just wouldn't. Or it does exist, but it's a slave. Then it executes this, and it does schedule blocks index two, destination more. It's the same shit, but for a different student. The, the only difference is that it changes who's dead, and for some reason, student three can't. No, wait, you can't. No, it can't. But it can. It, it can never not exist while student two can like oh i'm not gonna be in the map bye right right else if oh my god it's gonna oh be shit he's gonna do this for a lot of ids okay all right cool he, i'm pretty sure there's an easier way to do this i'm pretty fucking sure oh yeah oh like all of these things could be done if you just went something like, um, if, like, sure, I get the each student has an ID, but obviously some of these are more important than others. So, so what could happen is that young, like, he could have just, for example, set a generic student uh, script to have all the the general attributes that students would have right uh, that also brings me back to the thing of uh the teacher being a glorified student so let's say that a student 
is the the father script for everything related to being a character in this game. So for every one of these special cases here, like student ID 1, student ID 2, 3, 4, he could have just created different scripts that inherit from student script and just coded the things there. He wouldn't need to do comparisons every time. Like, sure, that would marginally make the game a little bit better and uh, perform in performance wise, but it would easily make it so first of all you wouldn't really need to uh recycle as much code and it would just so be so much easier to read and especially in the case of the teacher just make a teacher class that inherits from students it has the same attributes i get it like yeah i get it but then you can just make so much more if you just do that like if you what if you want to add some stuff for the teachers then oh i'm gonna go to the teacher class and be like all right what you what you got here unless unless he does have it already and in that case why does he have does he have it he it, that is if i can type teacher no he doesn't apparently well god so yeah just make specific classes for this. Sure, it's not uh, it's not really a great way to use inheritance, but it's a, it's a beginning, and it would make it a lot better to just than just doing this in a start function. Also, it's in the start function of every single student that gets instantiated. What the fuck? This is just not really good man like if you have uh, like if you have a specific class for a student like oh yeah this one is special then it's just gonna execute for that one it's just gonna do that it's not gonna go through all of this shit and 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 find the right one it's just gonna know which one it is and be like okay i'm gonna do this and that and it's done it would be so much simpler by the way uh, the, the whole thing of the names as well would also you could you could also just make uh, special names for these students. Could, that could also happen. Uh, anyway, where was I? Fucking here. Else if student four, idle and m is gonna be idle the strings. Yeah, walk and m is gonna be this. So I don't really know why these are strings, but these are not. You're loading them from somewhere. I. I don't know where though. Else if student five long skirt is true shy true. Else if student six relax and M cross time zero camera and M's hero and M's. Didn't you didn't you do that all the way back? Didn't you already set the camera and M's to be hero and M's? Wait, where is it? Somewhere right over here. Yeah, you did. Shouldn't shouldn't this be already set, man? I mean, con considering that it's such a special ID anyway. Uh, else if student seven run an M run feminine feminine zero sprint an M run feminine zero relax an M infirmary rest zero original sprint an M sprint an M cosmetic start game if not link game global off alphabet mode game objects at active false okay. So you do all of this just so in the end, if it's not in this mode, you set it to false. Why not check this first then? Because you, I, mm, I guess the only way this really makes sense to be the last one if he's going to eventually turn it on. But then if it does, he could just do unable. Uh, all this, this thing over here, unable, you know, but whatever. Mm, else if student eight idle and m equals bullet idle and m you already set that way back here so i wait no actually no that was for another case wait hold on all right so this is the first time this is actually used in this situation because this is already specific for student three and student two okay then student nine 
idle and am, idle scholarly. Okay, so it just sets here, and here and am's again. Student ten, uh, destroy. Oh, why? <laughs> what? Okay, so I don't get it. Why? Why did he do? So there's one thing that doesn't really make sense to me is. Why are you doing destroying this game object if you already did so much stuff with it beforehand just to then you realize oh this is student 10 it goes to the bin oh this the same for 11 by the way what why what's the point here why aren't these in the beginning of the the, the function they seem to be very important very exceptional cases it would save a lot of time just going through the, all of the shit over here, you know? Else if, student 24 and student 25. How are you two IDs at the same time? Like, if a student has only one ID, and it should, then this will never be true. There should be an or, okay? There should be an or. Should be they should be right this here. Should be this, okay? Not this, this. Okay then, whatever. This will never execute. Cool. Else if student ID equals twenty six, idle and name equals idle haughty zero. Walking name is walk haughty zero. Else if student ID is 28 or see he got he got it right this time student ID is 30 if student ID is 30 then smartphone okay the smartphone shit Kokona phone texture Kokona okay so if it's 28 or 30 but only 30 does this and there, there's nothing else so what's the point of being 28 then you're just special I was like oh yeah I'm special Okay then. So it, else if student ID is thirty one, then more of this garbage. There's there's apparently no difference between being student ID eight or thirty one. So it could have been an or right here. Just copy the shit and there you go. It literally would have made no difference. Uh, else if student 34 or 35, uh, then the idle name is idle short. So if paranoia is higher than 1.66666, why this very specific number? I don't know. It just is. It makes sense, right? Then, then it's paranoid. If it's higher than 1.66666, then it's paranoid. I would see something like this in Doom code, except that in Doom it would be something like this. Then it would be funny. Remember how Mick Gordon put 666 on the spectro spectrograph of the Doom, the Doom soundtrack? That shit's funny. Uh, else if student ID is 36, Task globals get task get task status thirty six is less than three. Uh, then idle and m. Then it sets some animations. Else, then it sets some other animations. And if the paranoia is again this weird number, then it's paranoid. Okay. Else, if okay, this is a now for a difference. No, 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 it's the same one. For the what is this again? You're checking student IDs, yeah, okay. So, else if student 39, then smartphone is different phone texture, and patrol animation is Midori. Okay, so this is for Midori. You, like I said, could have just made a script, uh, a class for Midori, and it would inherit from student class. Would have been a lot easier, but whatever. Else if student ID 51, then idle animation, it sets animations, then if club globals get club closed, club... God, this is just rolls out of my tongue. 
club clothes, get club clothes. Club type, the uh, line music. Then, if it's true, then it goes. It it sets a lot of of these animations here. Yeah, apparently for someone that is bullied a lot, Persona is loner. If mm, school globals dot roof fence is false, then it does schedule block for schedule block index two destination equals soak action equals soak schedule block five schedule blocks index four destination equals soak action equals soak schedule block six equals schedule blocks index seven soak why is every everything is soak it's gonna soak a lot else he seats okay if student 56 by the way uh, doing else if is not any better than just doing if in this case because it's, it's not really gonna work at all it's like it's, it's still gonna compare this and then it's gonna compare this and then it's gonna compare this like it just do ifs unless it's the case of the decompiler adding the else but I don't really know why it would do that but I don't know if it does in that case uh, I think that's actually Yandev doing adding the else's in, in before. If it's not, then pardon me. Um, all right, where was I? Okay, here. 56 sets animations. 57 sets animations. 58 sets animations. There, there's this Louth ID that is different for everyone. It skips by 20 for some reason. Uh, 59, same shit. 60, same shit, but he has hero names this time. 61, same shit. 62, uh, the weird paranoia number, uh, 64 or 65, the, the same shit, they look incredibly similar. Uh, if 66, animations, club threshold, 100, okay. If 69, animations, paranoia, if 71, animations this original walk animation is going to be walk animation okay so it finally sets what's the original walk animation for the for this for the student if student globals get student grudge for student id have a very specific id for the grudge or if it's true then if persona not coward and persona not evil and club not delinquent then it does reputation pending ref minus equals 10 pending ref minus equals 10 wait are these different why are these different id equals zero id for what and why wouldn't like, okay so as far as i know when you use id anywhere in a code you're just you're specifying something that identifies this object in a whole system. So you probably wouldn't be changing this, but here you are changing the ID. Okay, that's that's just bad. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what's the term, but it's pretty bad. While ID less than outlines dot length outlines index id dot color equals new color blah 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 id plus plus so we got goes to zero and wait so maybe the id is for s these outlined shit but then why are you naming it id name it something else name it like uh of like x i mean not not something as vague as that but name it something else Grudge equals true. Wait, where am I again? Okay, right here. No, yeah. Wait, yeah, over here. Grudge equals true. Can I name equal name? Evil and names. Okay. If persona equals flouth. Uh, school atmosphere minor minus are. God damn it! Less than equal to point eight. Or grudge 
then indoors equals true, spawns equals true. Shoe removal locker, what? If shoe removal locker is no, then you start the shoe removal. Wait, 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 what? Excuse me? What the fuck is this supposed to mean? It's not, it, like, this is not... <laughs> this is not bad code at all, but it's funny. Because it's just shoe removal lockers, no, then shoe removal start. Just remove those shoes. And then you put on the shoes again? Oh, wait, no, wait. Yeah, like, if this goes through, then he, then he removes the shoes, but then he puts on the shoes. Why are you, re why are you doing those? Why are you doing, why are you taking off the shoes and then putting them back on, man? Oh boy, okay. Uh, Sprint man, Slough, 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 Slough. Here on Amps, smartphones that act up through. Countdown speed equals 0 0.075. Wow, okay. Slough equals true. If male, then the smartphone is on a different position than to a female. Uh, smartphone transform law. Okay, uh, this club equals none. There's no club. Then student manager slough phase equals three. Get slough target. Wow, there's a target to slough. Else, slough. God, am I even pronouncing this correctly? Sleuth. Sleuth? Okay. Sleuth. A detective. So it's sleuth. I'm sorry. I think this is the first time I actually seen this word. Get sleuth target. Okay. Else. Then else sleuth target equals student manager close list student ID. Okay. If no grudge, then sleuth, 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 sleuth. sleuth. There's a lot of schedule blocks that do the same thing, and I'm not entirely sure why. Else, stock target, Yandere transform. Okay, so uh, if there's no grudge, then it's just loose. If there's grudge, apparently, towards the player, then it starts targeting the player. I see. I guess. Stock, 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 stock. Else if school global, school atmosphere, minus less or equal to 0.9, walking in, paranoid, oh god. Alright. I'm gonna keep this one out of the day. I'm tired right now. There's so still so much shit to go through. 